Salut everyone. In this video, I'm going to give a review of the Linux distribution called Big Linux. I don't know if you ever heard about it, uh, but yeah, after this video, which might be short, <laughs> which might be pretty short, you will have a good idea of what Big Linux really is. Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. As you know, I've been uh, continuing my quest of finding the perfect Linux distribution for gaming and content creation. And a lot of viewers mention the distribution called Big Linux. And within my first research about Big Linux, I found out that most of the documentation and website and description and even the Wikipedia page are uh, written in Portuguese. And it makes sense because Big Linux is a Brazilian distribution, which is actually pretty old. Like it started in 2004, but I, I was really never aware of it before you guys talk about it. So it was kind of a surprise. If you look at their history, uh, they started on Curumin, then Nopix, then Canotix, and finally Kumbuntu. In 2017, they moved and they were rebased on Deepin. And in 2021, they totally changed uh, like the core of the distribution and they migrated toward Manjaro. Yes, you heard it. Manjaro. And they have like their main desktop environment, which is KD Plasma. So really, when you come out to the distro itself, now you know what it's based on. And we'll talk about it a little bit more, obviously, in the rest of the review. But you will understand that their own approach, when you come of like describing themselves, seems to be really related to the accessibility. This is what they really like are thriving for. And you will see it's it they are kind of like getting there. Not really, but I will explain about it. So let's talk about the positive of the distro itself. Obviously, based on Manjaro, you will understand that installing the distro was relatively easy. You are on a fork of a fork and going through the installer was not bad. I have to say it was, it was pretty decent. And the first thing you're going to notice is how good, and I would say it like straight up, like how good the theming and I would say like the overall like attention to detail is. I went through all the different type of like desktop orientations they propose within KDE through their own interface. And I have to say this is pretty, I would say like surprising. They, they, they did it well there. There is no question about it. When you think about the rest, which is like related to theming, this distro has, in my opinion, the biggest and the cleanest wallpaper selection I ever experienced so far like this is really insane like on this aspect i have to say like big linux you did a great job like this is just amazing and i do understand why most of the users were like recommended to me like did it if you are just looking at the i would say like outside of the distro and you just look at the theming and the really like again like the i wouldn't say accessibility but you know like the feeling you get while running your desktop environment for the first time, it's, it's just like really good. I have to say like this, this is, they did a good job. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it again because I might say a lot of bad stuff after, <laughs> but this is, this is good. Now, what they also propose is like they have their own like uh, software, I would say uh, like stack on top of Manjaro. So they have something called Big Store, and you can go there and install all the application you want. Uh, they have a, a lot of little different application. I'm, I'm going to put a B-roll there to kind of like go through them. But, but really, it kind of gives you this, this experience of like polished and like really fine uh, desktop experience. And, and again, like for this team, I want to say thumbs up because you can see like there is work behind it. And it kind of gives you, again, like a, a, gr a great experience. Now we talk about the positive, let's talk about the negative. And about the negative, I, I need to say that the fact that it's based in Manjaro, that this distro is based on a fork, 
for me is definitely a, a no-no. Okay, um, I already made a video about Manjaro. I will put a link in the description below for you to have an understanding of really what Manjaro is. And even if some people like use it, have a lot of fun with Manjaro, which, which I, I get. Uh, I do believe like creating a fork of an actual fork of Arch is a problem. And by that, I'm going to explain exactly why I do believe it's a problem. If you look at the way the, the base of the distro is structured, you will see that the package manager is going to go through the big Linux own repository and then it's going to go and search in the Manjaro repository. And what I experience is that some of the applications that big Linux provide, even if they have a, a better feeling, than the one provided by Manjaro, they are kind of like duplicate. So you are in this weird position where sometimes you will have a pop-up uh, show, like, you know, like through, through the task manager, for example, showing you you can change your kernel. But on the other hand, you will have another application proposed by Big Linux that can also do that. And so it, in my opinion, it's kind of confusing and it's going to put you in a weird position where you will have two applications which are doing exactly the same thing. And my vision of any operating system is to be as much as possible debloated. I don't want to have multiple applications to execute the same thing. I understand maybe some of you really like having like option, but on the long term, more application for doing or executing the same task could be the source of more issue to execute only one task. So I don't know if it makes sense. It could be a, a source of problem. And really, when you think about the, the main philosophy of Arch, which is KISS, keep it stupid simple, this goes like totally against this philosophy. So yeah, that's just my point. Maybe you think differently, but yeah, like for me, it's, 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 it's a really big negative. Now, the second negative point I want to mention here is related to the structure again of the repo and how everything can be more in conflict. So I tried to install a simple application called OBS Studio Browser because that's what I like to do. Uh, I, I, I like to use this one and I like to compile it from the AUR. And because it's Arch, that's what I want it to do. So whether I was using the GUI for the big Linux applications there, or whether I was using the terminal, I, I could not install this simple AUR package. And I'm going to tell you, like, on, on distro, which are, like, simply based on Arch, like Endeavor OS or Cache OS or just Arch, you wouldn't have this issue. Everything would have worked. But now, because you are in kind of this mess of, like, repo and, like, application and, like, all, all those different strats, of complexity you actually don't need, well, you might not be able to install the package you want. And it, and it breaks the, the whole purpose of, of being on an Arch-based distro if you can't use the AUR. So what they do as alternative, they have their own uh, OBS uh, studio made by uh, Titan on their own repo, which is fine. You could use this one. And it, it was working while I installed it, but it kind of shows the type of issue you might encounter if the actual application you need is not in their repo. And the last point I want to talk about is the gaming performance. So when it comes to gaming performance, I had a ton of fun playing on this distro, to be fair. I, I did a full like uh, Counter-Strike 2, like uh, Deathmatch, out of this world. I, I did also like try Tomb Raider. I had a decent performance there. And I, I put the gaming part in the negative for a simple reason. I do believe the gaming situation was kind of on par with what Manjaro already provides. So they are not really providing a plus. So to me, if you don't provide more than your fork, it's a negative. Because, you know, it's going to come to, to a simple question. It's like, if you don't provide more than the actual like fork you are based on, like, why am I using Big Linux and not Manjaro? 
at least for gaming. All right, so how do I conclude this one? So as you certainly see, like this uh, video was pretty quick. It was a short review uh, compared to my other standard. And the reason why it's it's so quick, it's it's for me like it's a really hard distro to recommend to any of you guys. And you're gonna be like, wait, Air Max, like, wait, you just said like it, it looks really nice. They have like a nice GUI, and your experience in gaming was not that bad, which is true. The issue I have is like, if you use that as a daily driver on a long period of time, and you require like some specific applications which are not within the realm of big Linux. Man, like this, this is going to be a complicated experience. Okay. And I already went through this just with Manjaro. And I can't imagine like using a fork of a fork, like big Linux, what type of issue I'm going to go through. Can you solve them by yourself? Yes. Is it worth your time? In my opinion, no. You want a nice theme? Well, create it yourself. You're going to spend, you know, a little bit more time on it, but it's going to be your theme. You're going to be doing something really nice. And, uh, you know, you won't be uh, disappointed by the fact that your really nice distro at a certain point break. That's just my two cents. What I was, again, like when I was testing for like three hours, it didn't really break. But I can see it coming, guys. Like I, I can see from my experience that this distro could be a, a big source of, of issue. Maybe if the team of Big Linux is watching the video, really I apologize because I don't want to do something like negative. But what I would say to you guys is like, maybe it's time to rebase on Arch, just Arch, and based on that, do whatever you want, you know, in terms of GUI and everything and just not being a fork of a fork that's that's just my two cents guys thank you very much for watching again thanks for the support thanks for the thumb, thumbs up uh thanks for all the supporter of this channel who became a member of la creme de la creme club through the membership here on youtube or uh, through patreon i want also want to give a big 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 up of all the supporters that actually like supporting me through uh, paypal i'm losing my words because I, I don't know if it's the right place to say it here but i'm really aware of all the latest donation i has through paypal and for that guys i'm really thankful you guys are the reason why i continue to do this so thanks again uh, for your support, give me more like encouragement to continue to do so. Have a great rest of your day and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.